Hello, Nick Stevens here. I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of how DALI 2 works in practice. This is the new version, uh, not the one that's been around for a year or so as an app. And you need to apply and join their waitlist to get membership, which takes a few weeks. Uh, you operate the whole thing via the web, and this is the page you get once you're logged in. You've got a prompt here, which you feed it. And if you click generate, it will make some images based on that prompt. In this case, a space artist working on a painting. And you can click on them to see them from size. Uh, this is probably fairly typical in some ways. Note the problems around the face. Um, the rings are off center or a bit wonky. Very often they look quite good to start with, but don't look as good when you get close up. Uh, but you can always just try another one. Now, you're limited to 50 goes a day, so I'm going to show you some of the older ones. This is the strip you've got down here, uh, with some of the more recent. Again, some more space artists at work there. I like the one on the bottom right. And again, that's one hell of a pencil he's got there, but you get the idea. And uh, if you want something a bit stranger, it will definitely do that to uh, Sesame Street Zombies was the prompt, I think, for that one. Now, uh, a few other things to note. You cannot control cropping. That's probably the biggest weakness of all in this. So if it doesn't quite fit in, tough. That's not going to work. It never generates the same image twice, so you could give it the same prompt and you won't you won't get the same thing back, so you really do need to save something if you like it. But it can do various things in the style of, for example, I'll give you a couple of these right now, which I'm going to copy and paste. Oops, if you can spell it right, it doesn't seem to have the faintest idea of spelling. You can spell Leonardo either, I see now. You know, spacecraft concept art in the style of Leonardo da Vinci. Let's see what this gets. So, paste it and press enter. You get a progress meter and it shows you other examples which might give you an idea what else to try. The progress meter always seems to finish when it's three quarters of the way to, through. And here we go. So, uh, a lot less like Leonardo than some of the other ones I've tried. I'll show you some of those in a moment. But, Give the click generate on that again. Again, very easy to do if you don't like it. And more likely, actually, if you do like it and you want to get uh, something that builds on the one you had the first time. So let's see what's coming along here. Right, some of those, I suppose, they're a bit better. Let's try clicking on that one. And once you've found one you might quite like, you've got the other thing of clicking it is variations. This will base the new image on the old one so it won't vary quite as much. It's all hit and miss. It's limited control, so you might want to try amending the description. And here we go. I think you can probably see it's highlighted the original. These are a lot, uh, a lot more similar, a lot less variety there. Let's try something else while we're at it. I've got some, that's, that's a nice astronomical one. As you already have noticed, the number of examples it's got is fairly limited. Uh, interesting, it previously came up with engravings when I've done that. Uh, but there you go. And another one. Uh, this got some rather good results previously with Europa. So I'm hoping in some this would work as well. Uh, it is kind of frustrating, the lack of control at times. Really rather strange. I don't know what to make of that. What a, I suspect that's a distorted version of Saturn's rings we got there. 
Let's try steampunk and set it at clock please. You can go back and look at them again. You can see the ones I've been doing while we're working here on the right. Uh, oh, that's quite. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's kind of weird. I quite like those. Again, something more like insects tend to work. And one more, then I'll go to some history. This will show you how really weird you can get a children's party. In the style of Hieronymus and I can't and I can't spell Hieronymus or indeed Bosch. Oh, well, let's give it that and see what it makes. Children's party in the style of Hieronymus Bosch. In the style of works, well, it hasn't got that huge range of um, artists it knows. Uh, Salvador Dali it knows, uh, there's a few others you might see. And that looks nothing like the ones I got before, absolutely nothing. Uh, probably something due to a subtlety in the prompts I use. Okay, I'm going to show you some of the older ones here that I've saved out. Uh, these are in chronological order or they're about. I'm not going to move the mouse terribly quickly because Zoom, which I'm using to record, doesn't tend to keep up very well. Um, probably easier to look at these. Now you can see there's the actual prompt, a cosmonaut in ancient Egypt with a hamburger CGI style, I gave it there. Or, um, actually I quite liked that one. A watercolour of Kishinau in the sunshine. Kishinau, the capital of Moldova, where I am at the moment. Now the look and feel is not bad. Um, it certainly look, feels like Kishinau to me there. But if you just start looking at the buildings and how they connect to roads and the relationships to each other, again, not that great. That's the kind of thing which makes me feel that it's never going to produce finished art, really. It's still highly unlikely. Um, and it is really good for ideas. Uh, let's get rid of that one. Uh, there's the previous one. A, a, a children's party by Hieronymus Bosch I had before. Yeah, we've got balloons and distorted figures. Grotesque stuff tends to work quite well because the distortions in the human figures then look deliberate rather than like it's an error in the mechanism. Let's scroll down a bit more. Uh, a Marvel superhero portrait. Now these, I thought, came out really quite nicely. Um, okay, not so much the hero or the villain there. Um, it's definitely got the kind of feel you might get in a comic book. Or what? I don't know, and I love this one. I mean, you've got this weird thing on his forehead, a cable running down to this watch compass thing he's holding. Um, but the expression on the red helmet, cow, whatever you want to call it, uh, really quite fun. Uh, here's some, you can see here some of the other insects I tried. Uh, a horrific steampunk insect in a matrix of organs. Well, I don't see the organs there, but again, uh, that's, that's kind of cool. Salvador Dali elephant dancing. The elephant all came out with three legs. It's again another example of what it's potentially limited a bit. Um, and you can see the elephant there that I'm pointing at seems to have about three or four tails. Now, moving down, it can do stained glass windows. Uh, you can see a spider in the stained glass window there. I won't go any bigger, you can see them quite well when they're small. Salute Space Station, I get a lot of these. Now that, well, that looks really quite impressive to me to start with, but again, when you go in and zoom in, it's not entirely clear what's going on. Um, a bit messy, but as I say, when you look at it, it's all pretty good. Here are some of the other uh, spacecraft concept art by uh, Leonardo da Vinci. I really liked these. I got a whole run of great ones, which was probably the reason I tried it. Um, but yeah, that's definitely got the kind of uh, colouring of his sketches. Again, look at the weird, there's some weird stuff going on on the wheels. Uh, that way, in particular, what's connecting here? The perspective doesn't work. Is that. 
I really would have hoped it could do better with wheels. Uh, it's not like a wheel is a particularly unusual thing. And what have we got here? Uh, Gustave Doré Astronomical Instruments. That's what I was hoping to get before. There we go. Yep. Not really the engraving look, but uh, there you go. So I'm not trying to show you the best here. I'm trying to give you a feel for what it's good and bad at. Quite often to me, it seems if you give it something ridiculous, it's pleasantly surprising how well it gets. A robot duck in the style of a Victorian advertisement, for example. Uh, that's pretty much spot on. Uh, I don't know what you want to change to make it more like it. Text, you might notice again, is often really, really weird and looks like random letters. And if we're getting uh, really weird, Salvador Dali version of SpongeBob SquarePants. Uh, <laughs> he's acquired a horn for some reason. But yeah, the colours in the sky uh, do look a bit dolly to me. Uh, one of the few when I really liked what it came out with was this selection of deep sky uh, shots. Almost all done with a prompt, a wide angle photo of a nebula with many stars or a wide angle photo of a nebula. Uh, there's a lot of these I look at and think, what's that looking at the Horset Nebula? It's definitely, uh, those are pretty good. I can see myself using those. And down the bottom here, I posted up to the list, we've got a bunch of space artists that work. The face looks a bit ordered out of proportion. The hand's mangled. The right hand is got no fingers whatsoever. Um, so yeah, it really, really has limitations. Uh, that is one I rather like though. It's kind of like the grammar problem though, it's turning the artist into an astronaut. Um, it does that kind of thing a lot. If you ask for a picture of blue dog and red cat, it won't keep the colours with the right objects. You might get them the other way around, you might get blue and the, the, the colours mixed up on one. It's got a fair way to go. That sounds practical to me. I can believe they're going to fix that. Um, again, another space on this that worked there. So that's the kind of thing um, I've not got very far yet with mid journey. Other people are getting much, much better results than me out of it so far. We'll get back to you with that one later. Oh, there's some other nice ones. Europa fly by mission concept art. Uh, the Leonardo bit seems to have completely vanished and the concept art is uh, dominating. But that's quite nice, I think. You can see that nice bit. What is that? Is that an extra moon? It does look like it's got no concept of where moons can go. Uh, as you can see, all along here in every case, it's put a moon in the sky of the lunar surface, uh, which is unlikely to be what we wanted. Oh, Earth from low orbit, that's pretty good as well. Some of those are close to photographic I take this. I could see myself using that as a backdrop if I wanted a more painterly look. But the nebulae, Earth from low orbit, probably the only ones where I've really, really got something I'm happy with. Uh, shame about cropping. Look, look, the numbers and the text in completely messed up. So uh, step back and summarize. Is it going to put anyone out of work? No, absolutely never. And some of these problems seem really, really deep to me. Uh, I've not seen anything with something complex where you wouldn't need to clean it up. I think it's, it's a lot of fun. It'll get you a lot of views and clicks and likes or whatever on social media. Um, but it's not gonna be a threat to anyone that I can see. That's Steve Van Mechanic Octus. Now I'm going to do one last one for real before I shut down this video. Uh, is there anything that I've not done that would be good to do? Let's try and get a new space artist. Ah! 
I quite like them. I quite like them. That lighting in this one looks really good. Oh, if you get one you like, just click download. I'll get download to you, and that little flag there, I don't know what that does. Keeps it, let's try pressing it. No, it reports it. Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, they will, uh, before they let you loose, ask you to sign up for a Zoom session where they talk about how it works. You'll get various tips and things they don't want you to do. Uh, it tries to spot it automatically. It's all very sensible. It basically says keep your images PG. Don't try and generate images of a living person. They don't want to get into the deep fake stuff. I like that. I do rather like that. He appears to be using a pencil on the laptop, but uh, apart from that, look. ah, look at that face, horrific. <laughs> when you start off and small, I would really thought that was going to look better, but again, very typical. Uh, as, you, as you zoom in and someone's punched him in the mouth, at <laughs> best. Um, I'll save that anyway. So, that's probably what I've got to show you for now. It's great for ideas, useless pretty much for anything specific except backgrounds. I could also see myself using it for textures if I wanted a painting in the background of a scene I was working on. I could generate something like this uh, and you put it onto a picture. The pictures are always square and they're limited to, I think it was 1024 pixels on a side. You mid journey will let you get bigger than that. Um, but the mid journey is really confusing as you basically type commands into a Discord server with everyone else doing it at the same time. So you get this steady stream of text, which I find pretty much incomprehensible so far. But I have seen people get better results. So that one was it's the Martian landscape by Monet. <laughs> I don't what you think of that it's got the kind of orangey tones and skies and stuff but uh i doubt mr monet himself would be terribly impressed okay there you go and that's it for now